Uh, Chief Meteorologist Jeff Baradelli and Meteorologist Rebecca Berry join us now. And there is a lot of activity in the tropics, but also a lot of uncertainty, Rebecca. And that's what everyone's really fixated on because it's so far out and because the, the forecast models keep changing quite a bit. And Jeff and I have been talking about it. We've seen big changes even today. I mean, every it's like a windshield wiper. The models yeah. keep going back and forth. Now, the American model in the green and the European model in red. And you'll notice that the American model right off the gate as we head through the weekend into early next week is way to the west of the European model. So that initial start... Uh, kind of sets uh, a, a domino effect in motion, Rebecca. It's not only intensity, it's also timing that's ver that varies widely with what mm -hmm. we're seeing with these two different solutions. Because the American model is not interacting much with land, it gets out into those warm sea surface temperatures of the Gulf and really turns into a monster and is moving a lot slower than the Euro. Right, and look at this. I mean, we're talking Tuesday at 5 p.m., already making landfall according to the Euro here in the Florida Keys in South Florida. So at this point, if it moved close enough to us, we would experience effects five days from now. So that's quick. However, the American model, very different. The American model gets uh, left behind by the steering flow, whereas the Euro takes advantage of it, and it, by Wednesday, the Euro's gone. But the GFS is still lagging off the coast. Quite a difference here, Rebecca. And the good news it, with that Euro solution, even though we would be feeling the effects of it, we would be on the weaker side mm -hmm. of that system if it were to move into South Florida. We would still get rain. It would still be probably a pretty gloomy day and a little bit breezy at times. But then when, what's scary about the GFS solution here is how much of a monster it does become. It's a monster, and it stays out there for a long time. Now, this particular solution takes it into the panhandle, but there's no reason it couldn't come further east. So let's talk about why we have these discrepancies right right now. We do not yet have a center of circulation. You can see right there, look, there's no actual circulation at all. And also, it's lacking convection, so there is no there there yet. In addition, look at that. That outflow, it's battling outflow from Fiona right now. You can see it right there. So a lot of wind shear uh, with the system. So this is, this is how we remedy this, right, Rebecca? Yes. And so we're just going to start to get better and more accurate forecast information. They've got Hurricane Hunter aircraft out there flying through it, sampling all of the environment that it's going to move through. Look at that flight path. And so we're getting better information as we speak. So the two things that we need right now are recon. So Hurricane Hunters to go in there, give us more data, sample the environment, and we need it to actually develop. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, the models will start to come together. But the bottom line, uncertainty, right? Uncertainty. It's way too soon to be worried. It's way too soon to be dead set on what we expect it to happen, especially once it does get into the Gulf. We're going to continue to monitor it.